nine times. He talks about rejoice in the Lord. He says, I take joy in the in our friendship. And he talks about being filled with gladness. And so if you want to study about joy, then it's a good thing for us to look at the book of Philippians. And I want us to look at this whole topic of joy because the kingdom of God, the Bible says in Romans 14, 17, is not eating and is not drinking, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So let's look at joy in the Bible. We, we open up the, the book of uh, Philippians, you know, before I talk about joy. Uh, with, uh, it, he says, Paul and Timothy, born servants of Christ. Now, in every letter, Paul begins his, uh, um, his uh, you know, his letter, the statement of his apostleship. You know, say, Paul, an apostle of God. You know, in uh, Romans, in 1 Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians, in Galatians, in Ephesians, in Colossians, he talks about, you know, Paul, an apostle of God. Or he begins with a statement of his official position, you know. But here, he says that I am a bond servant of God. You know, and very clearly, I am a bond servant. Nothing else. No apostle, nothing at all. In other places, he talks bond servant of God, apostle of Jesus. But here, he says, I am a bond servant. Now, the word bond servant means basically, I belong to God. And the thing is that, you know, in this day today, we find, and also in Paul's time, everybody, you know, will be very, very independent, very, very individualistic. If I were to come to you, or your pastor were to come to you and say there's some problems in your life, uh, and, and he would speak into your life, maybe you would not be very happy. Because you would say, what right do you have to speak in my life? You know, many times somebody else comes and says, stop doing that thing or do, don't do this. And we get very upset. You know, who does he think he is? Why should they speak like that? But Paul says, I don't belong to myself. I belong to God. You know, I don't belong to myself. And today is the age of day of individualism where everybody says, nobody has a right to speak to me. We say, we belong to ourselves. I belong to me and no one has a right to speak to me about what my life is. I will set the goals of my own life. I will walk in the way I want, in the directions I like. I will take drugs, I will watch porn, I will do what I want and nobody should say anything. I might say nice things to the people who speak to me, but internally I will say, maybe I want to know and meet that person again. But Paul says, I don't belong to myself, I belong to God. Elsewhere in Romans he says that I am no longer, we are no longer slaves of unrighteousness, we are slaves of God, we are slaves of righteousness. So when Paul is there, he says very clearly, I belong to God. And worship is all about not singing a song, stand up for Jesus, or other songs that we sing, which are very beautiful, especially when the Nagas sing them because you have lovely voices. But the thing is, worship is to say that I belong to God. You see, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Paul very clearly outlines what worship is. And I think that what happens is that we need to start thinking about how can we offer up ourselves as a living sacrifice to God? 
for this Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, is your reasonable act of worship. Not just act of worship, but it's the most reasonable thing you can do, is to offer yourselves to God. That means you belong to God. So when Paul is talking to them about being a bond servant, he is setting the direction for the letter, saying that worship is to do with offering your own self, every part of you, your thoughts, your actions, everything in you to God. And then you find that he says, I, I'm speaking to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and the deacons. Now the word saint is not a very well translated word in this, uh, in, in, in your Bibles, because you'll find the word saint actually comes from a word that is Haggaius, and Haggaius is not the word saint. Haggaius means actually to be attached to something. So my hand is attached to my arm, and my arm is attached to my body. So when I say Haggaius, my arm is Haggaius to my hand, or my arm is Haggaius to my body. That's what it means. It means I am attached in such a way that I cannot be removed without very strong, you know, something cutting it or an accident or a surgery. He says, I pray for you, making my request with joy. In other words, prayer for other people releases joy in your life. Okay, prayer, when you pray for others, when you are concerned about the plight of others, when you pray for your brother, your sister, when you pray for your family, when you pray for your friends, when you pray for people outside of yourself, when you intercede for the nation, when you pray for those who matter, when you pray for those who are going through a bad time, it is one of the conduits, one of the doors that opens up joy into your life. Be concerned for other people brings joy into a person's life. Now, you know, when I'm concerned about myself, only about myself, then I am only I become a very selfish human being. I always want my, something for myself. I become bitter when I don't get it. I want more, I want more, I want more, and I want more. The joy of God only comes when you are thinking about other people, focused around other people, because God is focused around others. The second thing we read about joy, we find it in Philippians 1.18. He says, you know, you know, what is happening in that place was that there were some people who were preaching Christ, but they had a wrong motive. And there were some people who were preaching Christ, but they had a good motive. And then he says, you know, it doesn't matter whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and is preached, the therefore I rejoice. The telling others about Jesus produces joy in our lives. Now that's something which is very important for us to remember. It says, you know, when, when, the, when Jesus was talking to the apostles in Matthew 28, 18 to, 18 to 20, he says, go into all the world and baptize them, you know, make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, commanding them to do all that I have told you. So that's a command. We're not supposed to say, no, I'm a Christian, I was born into a Christian family, you know, and I can do what I want because after all, it doesn't matter because God always forgives me. No, 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 no. There's a mandate for the church. There's a mandate for the individual. You sitting here have a foundation, a sure foundation in Christ, and one of them, is to begin to speak about your faith with other people. One of them is to say to other people that Jesus lives. One of them is to live out your life in such a way that Jesus lives. Only what you talk is 20% of the argument. What you do is the remaining 80%. So the third thing about joy is that the second thing about joy is that you talk to others about Christ. And when you talk to others about Christ, that releases joy in your life. Now, number three, in 125, he says that, you know, I have this confidence that I shall abide and continue with you for, with all furtherance and the joy of faith. In other words, he says, when you trust in God and you are in the works of God, when you move into a place of faith, you find joy. You know, in Hebrews 11, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without trusting in God, without going beyond your limits and looking for resources that are beyond yourself, looking for something that goes beyond who you are, and then finding it in God, that is the only thing which God 
is you know God is pleased with those who have faith and then he says he goes on to say but for by this the elders obtained a big report, a good report the elders being Abraham elders being Moses elders being Sarah elders being people who had passed on but they obtained a good report because of the fact that they had chosen to believe in God and not in their own resources. It says that later on, Abraham believed in God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness because he was almost dead. In fact, he was as good as dead, but he believed that he and Sarah would have a child. And now that was way beyond Abraham's resources. He was 99 years old when Sarah got pregnant. She was 74 years old. When she was 75, there was a child born to them. Isaac was born. Before that, they had tried some funny thing with Hagar and that didn't work out very well. Ishmael was born and it was all a big mess. But now they had their own kid. Now, I don't know what you think about that. Now, all of you are young people, at least in comparison to my gray hair. All of you are very young people. You think about a person who's 60 years old having a son, say, yeah, that's possible. Possible. No, 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 no problem. No. 70 years old, mm, okay, it's possible. 80 years old, yes, maybe it's possible. 90 years old, I don't sure. And 100 years old, my goodness me, what a joke. That would be a miracle. And you think about a lady who's passed her prime, who's past the age of menopause, having a child at 75 years old, you think, how in God's name is that possible? Because it's God's name, it is possible. You see, the thing is, this is what faith does. You are able to give birth to the things of God, which go beyond your money in the bank, beyond the resources that you have, beyond your bodily resources, you are able to be strong to do whatever you want to do because God is in it. First, the fluency and musical details. Hi, uh, Mark, uh, Mark, 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 ว่าก็ฮาเกิลเอ่อจัสมาซาเลอร์เปียนฮาเกวายกะโซมเรกเกดีบินาริดัมเอ่อชาริดัมไทมิงริดัมฮาเนอะเดนพิชชิงไลท
I don't know for others, for, uh, but for both of us, the sound session sounds are supposed to come. And then, Hailaka, Mark Song, Hailaka, Mark Song, you know, right? And in uh, the communication, communication style, I like the way how you communicate. You know, the way you are, 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 and then your, whether you are confident enough. No, no confidence ka. And now, be no confidence ka. Haya pane, I own the so, Mark Swamp right here on the internet. One interesting part is, this is dress code. Haya no. This is dress code. Pane, haya, hai pa maga, tando man right. Haya, maag pang pine, dress, oh, this is not dress, I know. Haya maag pang pine, and the last, Overall presentation. Overall presentation be a mapa. I feel it. Yeah. 
victory chirati required
Jesus and to all the congregation. And in that talk, you know, now I'm titled the Jesus Home Naring of Hungary. Yeah, we talk about that all of us. Hey, Ani, hey, Chirakil, he prayers him of where Revelation and Ibing, and he owns that, and he has some of those. i 